What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we're providing a state of the market and stock picks for November 30th, 2022. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. So as you can see, the market has not really done a whole lot today. Uh, there has been a lot going on over the weekend. Um, there are riots going on in China, essentially because of the lockdowns. People are pretty much just fed up uh, with that. Uh, we've also had Bullard essentially uh, talking about rates hitting 7%. Uh, now, what uh, could be essentially the downfall of this uh, current push is the fact that we have Powell tomorrow. He'll be coming on at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I believe he is actually fielding questions. And if he had all hints of a 7% rate, uh, we are going to fall. Uh, 50 points, 100 points, maybe. I don't think it's going to be enough to panic the market. Uh, the market does need a natural healthy pullback. And I think that that could provide that. Uh, now, going into everything else, my theme is still the same. There's still a lot of bad things currently going on. They're still uh, working themselves out. Now, if Powell does say a 7% uh, possibility, uh, that may be 100. It could still cause a lingering effect that maybe, just maybe, we won't be having a 50% or 50-point basis move coming into uh, the month of December. Again, I think that really depends on core. Uh, and how how much of a downturn we're still getting on inflation. Uh, but again, you have to also realize something I've been talking about is now that we are trying to gauge where the consumer is at, a lot of the numbers are misleading uh, as severance packages are out there, as uh, a lot of different things are, are currently uh, going on right now uh, that make things look like we're still growing uh, to some extent. Uh, but with all that being said, uh, things are are not looking great. The FTX stuff is taking down crypto, uh, essentially single-handedly as more information is being discovered. Uh, and then now you got uh, a lot of instability going on with China and an understanding that it affects a lot of these big uh, safe havens that we are since that I essentially trade and that essentially have a lot of weight in the market being Apple and Tesla uh, per se. Now, with that also being said, you have to also realize that the banks have been on a massive run and uh, the banks need, again, another healthy pullback. You don't want these banks to be running parabolic uh, without any kind of correction. Again, you want some sort of uh, touchback to be able to build that momentum back to the upside. Again, I don't believe we're going to be seeing an all-time high anytime soon, uh, but ultimately understand that uh, things are still really bad and that we're going to get more of a, a bigger, I think, correction, more of, a, more of a downside when it comes to next year. Now, how we get to that point uh, really just depends. Right now, we're currently going through Q4. Uh, these earnings have got a while before we start hearing in January. So you've got about another month and a half before we start getting earnings of uh, Christmas and understand that Amazon has laid off a lot, which says a lot in itself. Now they could come and say, hey, we're still profitable, which is maybe why they laid off. Uh, maybe people are working overtime, understanding, again, numbers are very misleading at this point. Uh, people could be working uh, double, triple shifts to try to cover it uh, because there isn't enough uh, people actually in the workforce right now. Um, but it's it's really hard to say. Again, people might be working multiple jobs. Again, you still have to understand that rent is extremely high. Uh, so any people that are selling their homes, uh, either one can't turn around and afford another home or uh, two have to pay a ridiculously high fees for rent at the moment. Uh, and it's not saying things can't get better, but right now they are not looking good. And, and so if things can play out correctly, maybe. But again, solely depends on the Fed. Where is the Fed at? If they are seriously taking the 7% rate uh, rates into consideration, that could be cause for an alarm because uh, we've already seen what impact it's had right now. And that's only going to worsen the current environment 
uh, to where it will be. And then a lot of these things that I've been talking about will get even worse and will play out even faster. Uh, but ultimately understand, again, uh, the 13th and or the 14th, uh, 13th and 14th would be very critical of December. Again, we still got another week and a half, and roughly about another two weeks before that even happens. Uh, but when it does happen, it is, it is definitely going to uh, leave a mark uh, for uh, 2023 and how we will go about 2023. And Apple also had some news today that they were uh, they were losing. Uh, I can't remember uh, two. I think it was a couple million, uh, six million, I believe, is what it was on products in China. And understand that uh, again, this this China lockdown is is not a good sign. Again, your your safe havens are going to struggle. And understand that ads have not been great because the consumer hasn't bounced back yet. Again. Yes, inflation has come down in used cars and everything else, but uh, food uh, is still up because people, if they can't purchase other things, they'll they'll buy. You have to understand the the emotional psychology behind food. Food is cheap and it's an emotional high that uh, that is. Uh, immediate you, there's no uh you, you don't have to wait essentially for uh, gratification food is a uh, an immediate uh satisfier and and come bring us back to good memories and all those kind of things just trying to throw some psychology in there and understand that this is why uh you know it seems like the consumer is okay uh, because they're pay spending all their money on essentially uh non on essentially uh, the basic necessities uh now i know it choked me up trying to throw all that stuff out there but <laughs> nonetheless uh the the basic necessities are what is crucial here and understand that people are pouring their credit cards into this so it doesn't look like it is is really having that much effect uh when you're starting to see essentially um the demand for other goods assigned from basic necessities uh, to not have inflation. So that's great. That it makes things look fantastic in a growth recession when, uh, when in fact, the true uh, consumer is struggling uh, very much so. And at any moment is liquidating homes and liquidating all these other different assets that they have uh, because they're out of savings. And so uh, with that being said, again, trying to make home improvements, whatever the case is, they can get uh, built equity within our home, but ultimately understand that there, was, if there starts to become a point where there is a massive amount of supply. It's not going to matter how much uh, money you're trying to invest in and upgrade your home to hopefully get more equity in your home uh, to be able to sell it for more when there's just a massive amount of demand. And then it's on the, the buyer as, as so much the seller as essentially the market's been on the seller side over the past past while. Uh, so with that being said, uh, it's, it's all a ticking time bomb from here. But again, it is heavily reliant on what the Fed's next move is. And this is why we're doing a lot of this hurry up and wait, because we have to see what the Fed's next move is. Is the Fed's talking really about a 7%? Uh, the market is in for a, a pretty nasty uh, potential correction. Again, short term, uh, pretty nasty correction. I think we could drop another 100 points, 150 points. Uh, from here, if Powell does say 7% is, is a possibility, which, again, he's, he's kept reiterating that nothing is off the table. Uh, and so in telling people he, everything is too premature, so really depending, again, on the words of Powell, what will happen and how uh, we'll go into the 13th and 14th with the monetary policy and core. Uh, again, core could improve, uh, but again, ultimately what is going to matter as people were making their moves off of inflation. Now, if inflation is getting better and you find that uh, the Fed is still increasing rates, which they're going to increase rates, it just depends. It's going to be a 25, 50 point basis move, maybe even still a possibility of 75. If Powell uh, suggests uh, that we're going to continue to raise rates until we hit the essentially that 7%, uh, which again is a, is a very strong possibility. We, re we really aren't that far away. Um, again, it's going to be concerning because they have to hold it there at that point and what kind of pressure it puts on the consumer. So 
yes, we're kind of premature in the market movements. That's the way the market moves. The mar market moves off of headline news and, and kind of premature moves and essentially the hopium factor and ult ultimately know that it's it's in preparation that things could potentially get better. But if they're not, the Fed continue to hold rates, right? And what it's, it's in hopes that the Fed drop rates, that they start taking off rates. But if they don't, the market will correct accordingly. Uh, and understand that's what they've been talking about the whole time. And history has shown us that, that once these rates, you know, get over 5% uh, percent, that they hold that long for 10 years. Uh, and so if you have high rates for a prolonged period of time, uh, again, you are eliminating a lot of people, uh, a lot of people's purchasing power and people wanting to buy. And so if, again, people come off of severance packages and start liquidating assets, again, where are they going to go from that point? If they can't sell their homes, they're going to go bankrupt. So again, banks really don't want to want people to go bankrupt. But if people don't have a job and they don't, they're liquidating all the assets, can't get rid of their assets, um, it's going to be a big issue. So a lot of people do not prep ahead of time before these things happen. Uh, when you know it was a phenomenal bull market that we had for the past two years, uh, and they buy all these uh, expensive items, thinking that it will just continue on when it doesn't. And then uh, it's forcing people to go back to work and all these people from venturing out, doing other things. Uh, so again, right now, what we're concerned about is what's going to happen with Powell tomorrow. Uh, we do have some data on Tuesday or Thursday morning, uh, which will have more weight. Again, trying to judge where the consumer is at. And then we got non-farms on Friday, which again are going to be very misleading uh, because of the fact that people are on severance packages. So they're still considered employed. Uh, so again, a lot of things to consider here. The market volatility is not going to dissipate over the next couple of days. You're going to get a lot of market volatility over the next three days. Be very mindful of that. Uh, it's not saying I think we're going to get a lot of fake outs, really just going to try to determine what's going to happen on the 13th and 14th. Uh, so again, a lot of stuff is going to um, going to matter. And we've, we've been playing a pretty big range here. As you can see here, uh, as you can see here, we've been kind of playing essentially roughly this uh, the 3900 up to that uh, that 4030, uh, and I can can see us doing that for the next couple of days and getting uh, really really choppy, potentially going in and then potentially selling off, uh, going into monetary policy. Uh, just in preparation of it's good. I can see us potentially uh, going back up. I really don't see us. I do not see us going back to all time highs. I can see us making maybe a hundred point move to the upside if things are positive. Uh, but I really don't see. And again, it's very much depending on what happens tomorrow in the next couple of days. Again, people have uh, attention span is very short when it comes to Powell. Uh, you'll get a quick correction. And then typically it's been bought up uh, as people are uh, thinking it could be a bottom. Uh, which I think could be a temporarily bottom uh, for that 3,600, but ultimately understand if we continue to float around here uh, and then the consumer uh, starts to go bad or we get next earnings and it is really bad, or we talk about 7% uh, interest rates and then I'll understand that we're going to hold it there for a, a while, uh, which is going to happen, uh, things are going to get nasty. And then it's just waiting for the consumer to buckle and for this thing to potentially uh, have a, uh, a real crash. Right now, you're just dealing with uh, the repercussions of rate increases at a rapid rate. Uh, so you're getting a lot of choppiness, volatility, and then you might actually have like an actual crash potentially next year. Again, crashes don't typically always happen. You have to be mindful of that. Again, it just really depends on the timing of these things. And a lot of times, sometimes they can work themselves out, again, depending on the Fed. Now, uh, from this point on, we could recover. I believe we could recover if the Fed let off, but I don't think they will. And again, they in the history has shown us that they've held rates at a high, uh, prolonged period of time. So with that being said, I know I've rented quite a bit here, uh, just kind of getting that out there. So watching that um, again tomorrow, one one thirty uh, Eastern Standard Time, really watching that to see where this thing uh, could potentially go tomorrow. Uh, Bitcoin, again, um, I think it's really waiting. I think this can make another solid leg down, especially if you start increasing rates more. Um, could be worrisome. Again, the stuff with China is a very big black swan that could potentially sink the market. Again, these black swans are very close to occurring. Uh, so you have to be mindful of that and the impact it has on um, 
on our economy uh, and, and and what it does. And so we want, we don't want all these other countries to fail. It's not great because uh, imports, exports. Yes, we are pretty self-sustaining and it will have an impact on our market. Uh, you just have to be mindful that we can't keep afloat while everybody else uh, essentially uh, sinks. <laughs> sinks. So, uh, so watching Bitcoin there, the dollar uh, did have some strength today. Uh, still bouncing back and forth though. This thing, uh, again, if the bulls, they want this to break 105, uh, bears, uh, you want this thing to push hopefully back up to the 110 mark, but we'll have to see again how that works. Again, you can't go off with of technicals. Uh, market is very news sensitive. So the technicals are, can go completely out the window uh, if any kind of news does drop. And we've seen that all throughout the year. Uh, Tesla, I do like this descending wedge. Um, I'm kind of hoping this thing potentially comes back down to 160 again. If they talk about rates tomorrow, I think this thing could potentially hit that 166, uh, maybe even the 150. Uh, we'll have to see how the market does play, but I'm looking to grab this bottom because I do believe it could get a nice uh, breakout, at least to the upside for uh, earnings, a uh, potential earnings run. Uh, coming into uh, Q1, reporting Q4 earnings. So kind of watching that there. Now, Apple is definitely one I want to keep an eye on. There's a lot of rumors, again, about them buying Disney. Uh, again, this would be the time that they would want to do it. Uh, but we have to see how that plays out. I'm really watching this, this 135 area. If Apple does come down here, I do, I do want to grab this for a potential uh, earnings, uh, pre-earnings run-up. Uh, again, we still got a, quite a while, another month and a half for that to happen. Uh, it's enough time for this team to hopefully come down here and hold the 135. Again, it really depends on events. Uh, this is why risk management is really important uh, because if it does break that, again, this thing could see lower. But it is, um, it's is—it's been stock split quite a few times, and this is why so why stocks do do, do splits. So these moves aren't um, aren't as bad as they could have been if they hadn't done the split. Uh, diluting the shares does help quite a bit uh, during times like this. Uh, BA, uh, again, very strong, but it's going sideways. It can't break out of the one, uh, the 178. So I'm looking for this to kind of turn over, much like the banks. A lot of value is looking much like the banks. Uh, as you can see here, the banks are starting to kind of hold roughly. JPM is roughly kind of holding uh, that 136. Uh, needs to break out of that for this thing to continue up. But I don't, again, like the parabolic moves without any touchbacks. Uh, I would like a correction of at least 50%. It's not doing that. Uh, so just be mindful when this thing does come down, it's going to come down pretty quick. So you got to be prepared for that day when it's there and make sure you're placing stops uh, because I think this run is very temporarily and will be corrected uh, given what the next, uh, essentially the next month that's coming to play out you know, going into Q1. Again, there's not a lot going on, but there's very uh, big events that are going to happen. Uh, that are kind of going to dictate what's going to happen in 2023. So that's what we're really trying to watch out for. But again, I don't want to make this too long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Uh, if you do like this video, remember to hit the like button on the way out. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.